Looks like we're lowering the bar. So that that makes me think of uh, embarrassing animal stories. Oh, Ooh. oh boy! Embarrassing animals. Well, I, I got a good one. I got a good one because I, I used to go to this charter school that was an agricultural school. Um, so, in the sense that, um, first of all, it was free. It was a free to free to, free to go to. So it was. Uh, it ended up being kind of the dump off zone for all the kids that got kicked out of the, the public schools in my area. We didn't know that at the time, and I just I just moved from Oregon. And they, in a novel idea is instead of like detention and stuff like that, you'd have to do farm work because we had, we had a barn and, you know, horses and, and, and livestock with sheep, goats, chickens, that whole thing. We had an emu, we had an emu and, uh, this was a mean ornery bastard. It was just, it was like, it would like hunt the kindergartners when they'd go out there. It was, it was like watching the predator, but not as cool. They're just the right size. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I don't know. I'd watch an entire movie about an emu hunting kindergartners. (laughs) I think that would be. Do it. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) I think that would be a fantastic. That's the block. Next blockbuster hit of the summer. (laughs) (laughs) But um, the emu died. Uh, It was, it was ancient when, when I got there. And we're like, yeah, you know, we thought it would be dead, you know, years ago. And its spite is keeping it alive. It's it's malcontent <laughs> toward the human race. And, and so um, it finally died. And some unfortunate friends of mine got in trouble that week for some something. And so they were had to do their community service, which was whatever the principal tells them to do on you know, for the farm work. And so he said, all right, the emu's dead. Go out to the field and bury it. Jesus. And And these guys, oh, no, it gets better. It gets better. Um, these guys, uh, they weren't too bright. Uh, they weren't too bright at all. And so they dug the hole, but they did not dig the hole deep enough to fit the whole thing in. And so its legs were kind of awkwardly sticking out. Um, you know, like not quite up in the air, but you know, like there was just a pair of legs, you know, coming out of the ground. And, uh, so, and it took them long enough because they were goofing around because that's Mm -hmm. what middle schoolers that have to do work do. Um. The, the work ethic uh, patch is not applied until <laughs> high school. Um, and so the principal ended up, because it was the end of the day, and he's just like, I- I'm not going to d- redig this hole. So he got the chainsaw out, he cut the legs off, and he oh threw them in the dumpster. God. What and, well, bizarre I guess that, world. that solves that. Pr- I mean, to be fair, yeah. it, it is the the uh, path of least resistance uh, solution. Like, <laughs> that's the, all right, look, this is a problem that needs to be solved. What's the easiest and quickest way to solve it? Because obviously, like, he's already, you know, uh, made the decision to not, like, he's he's not personally not going to do it. And pushing it off on someone else has already failed. So, the logical, clear next step with at minimum exertion is break out the chainsaw. I mean, I'm always down for any problem that can be solved by breaking out the chainsaw. <laughs> So All right, Ash. I guess I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. The, the, any problem. Mm. I think any situation is made better by just breaking out the chainsaw. Got primitive screw heads. Got, uh, got deadites. You know, got, got, got a dead emu in your field with a leg sticking out. Bring out the chainsaw. I'm just imagining that this is something that has happened before. So you're, this, you're, you're, this field is just like those body farms. That they use. <laughs> so they're just different animal body parts <laughs> sticking out of the ground every so often. <laughs> Anytime an animal on the farm has died, he's had a bunch of middle schoolers go and bury it insufficiently. I mean, you'd think he'd learn. There's just a field. It's like it's like it's like he's planting animals. All right, kids, this is how we get new pigs. Save them for later. You know, this was this was a different era. This was the, the Halcyon days before. Uh, before 2001, when you could get away with making kids do work at, outside <laughs> for education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's my creepy animal story. So mine... It's hard to top that one. Mine is... <laughs> Should have started... Wait, wait, wait. All right. So I was like 14 years old. Mm. And um, I was living in uh, Dyer, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, my uh, one of my best friends would, wanted to hang out with his girlfriend, and he mm-hmm. and I were hanging out. So we we go over to his girlfriend's house, and uh, she's got a trampoline in the backyard. So I'm like, and you know, he and I, uh, along with uh, another friend of ours, Justin, uh, used to bounce on like 
their neighborhood trampoline and like practice wrestling moves and you know so we were like always working on new flips and shit like that and like yeah. always playing around on the trampoline so i'm like oh yeah dude you hang out with your girlfriend i'll jump on her tra- on her trampoline it'll be fun that's fine whatever you know i'll occupy myself so they're like sitting in the backyard on this bench and talking and you know like almost kissing like high schoolers do and uh, uh, I'm jumping on the trampoline, <laughs> just having fun, you know, just you know, uh, one move that I had always been trying to do was a moonsault, which is like a oh. one and a half uh, uh, backflip. Basically, like you end up landing on your back, like you oh, do yeah. uh, one in a, in a portion rotation to land on your back. <clears throat> and I accidentally nailed it. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. Hell Yeah. So I tried to do it on purpose, and <laughs> I get a little too much sideways motion. Uh oh! And I come down like kind of in uh, in an all fours kind of like I'm approaching the earth as though you know if I were flat with the ground, I would be on all fours from the earth to his doom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm. And I'm off from my launch position just enough for the metal uh, rail around the trampoline to be lined up with my knees. Ooh. And so I slam down. The rail slams into both of my knees, and I end up on the ground, on the, on the, uh, the yard. And I have, like, my knees have just suffered this trauma. I'm not moving. I'm just on all fours. I can try as hard as I want, and I will not stand. Like, my legs are not listening to me. I am stuck in all fours. Enter my friend's girlfriend's dog. I was wondering (laughs) when the animal was going to show up in this story. And the dog decides to be super helpful and mount me. (laughs) I mean, you know, uh, people say that WWE is is entertaining, but I mean, a, a botched moonsault, you know, follow, followed by by a pin, by a, you know, a sexual pin by a dog, you know. So I mean, that's made for television. And right what there. sucks is for television. I can do nothing. I can't stand. So I can't do anything. I'm like, go on, go on, and I'm like just shaking back and forth, which just makes him mount more. And we're giving him more pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, he's, he's in a submission hold. I don't know if we can take this much longer. Uh, uh. Don't move. He likes it. He likes it when you move. He likes it when you struggle. So, yeah, that's that's my my uh, uh, animal story. I, I thought I thought it was going to, you know, I thought you were going to like moonsault your friend and his girlfriend and then somehow like a bird or, you know, you would like like John Woo style, you know, a bunch of doves would just fly up. You know, High school romance is dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I feel bad going last here. Mine, mine's a basic story, but probably my worst moment with an animal. And it's the reason why I don't want a big dog. Actually, for some reason, whenever I'm in the same room with a dog larger than a cat, uh, they like to jump directly into the family jewel area. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not over exaggerating this. It is 100% of the time. This happened last night too. But this time was particularly awful because my stepdad had a 50-pound chocolate pit bull. This dog was a large sausage. Mr. Worldwide. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Pit bull literally just jumped on my nuts out of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But... It's my terrible yeah, pit bull impression. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> oh, oh with, that, with my voice too, I actually do a pretty good pit bull impression. Right that, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. But anyways, I'm sitting on. We have a lounge in my uh, stepdad's living room, so I'm like laying out with my legs out and kind of you know relaxing, watching television. And I see out of the corner of my eyes, fifty pound fat ass pit bull running full speed jumps through the air, cl- almost clears the entire lounge, but not quite. All four paws basically just kind of conjoin. Like, you know how they bound? Yeah, yeah. They, all 50 pounds of this pit bull in a pure, just one impact point right into the family jewels. I went 
down further than I already was. I was laying down, <laughs> but you know, I sank into the couch. I like it was one of those where you just feel it in your entire stomach. And I am crying. I am literally, tears are coming down my face. <laughs> you are already dead. I was, <laughs> I was dead. And my mom Just comes. Just start urinating out your nipples. <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> urinating out my nipples. <laughs> I mean, I, just, it just pushed everything <laughs> up a good foot in your body. Pretty much. <laughs> so I'm sitting there tearing and like literally I'm whimpering. I've, I've been transported back to preschool and I'm crying like a little baby. This is how it was the worst nut shot that I've ever taken. You have in my one life. of those one of those flashbacks where you're remembering every single time you've been kicked in the balls throughout Everyone, your life. Everyone, it was just like it was like a freaking fl- slideshow of just <laughs> okay there's when i got a b- basketball thrown in my junk there's where i got up to uh, just everyone and i was really and they, none of them added they did they all went through my head and even then they didn't add up to what i was feeling in this moment <laughs> so of course my mom walks in and just goes it's not that bad and I look at her with the <laughs> most angry stink eye of my life. I'm just like, you fucking don't understand. And I've never felt so righteous about being a man. And so I did it in that moment. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you just you just rest your tits on the counter and I'll drop 50 pounds on them. Exactly. But yeah, that's my. That, that doesn't sound pleasant it, it at all. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. <laughs> Zero out of 10 would not do again. One out of ten with me.